and then let's see what's the one job this is. Find a kid with PG, sorry, alternator. So that's an emulator of it. So it's a camper. We seem to have some major issues. So this I don't know. You will be able to see. Probably I'll dismantle and then show. For now, let me do some recording um, of the pedals, all the pedals on the positions. I need to do this recording so that I can get it back to the same position. That's what it is right now. T1, then V1, T2. Once we dismantle, we'll do the recordings of the connections. Then proceed with the rest of the work. So this work is exactly that's after it. two weeks of that's the other one that we did. Uh, for that that's 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 So very exciting work going on yeah. right now. Yeah, so the rotor is dismantled. We have all the lugs, the cables, all the 24 leads of the winding outside. So we're done the recording of the terminal placings. Now, uh, yeah, we see the state of the stator. Uh, yeah, let's see it. It's burnt, it's blown up for a bad reason. So we are working on finding, identifying the root cause. Not sure yet what could have caused it. Uh, but we are still thinking deep what could be the root cause because we have explained to the client what could have happened yeah so that's one part of it that's other side of it yeah this is the other side of it where you can see it's fully blown unfortunately yeah, a few metal parts in there we don't know that would have caused it or any foreign, foreign body would have caused it and this is the state of the state of the road right now. Seems to be okay pretty now. The road seems to be okay. A mega test of thousand holes. Do not show any earth leak. Uh, we got a uh, total resistance of uh, 3.2 gigaohms. So road seems to be okay for now. So we'll proceed with the next steps. Try to see what would be the Root cause, probable root cause, and what would have caused it. That's a puzzle you have to take a look at. Okay. We reached the stage. Um, all the old copper is stripped off. Slot insulations are done, similar to what they are supposed to do. Okay. Uh, of course, this one's not remaining. So, we're going with diamond shed coils, which is our standard. We took a sample coil, and that seems to be fine right now. Uh, proceeding this, we are starting our full fledged uh, coil preparation. And of course, uh, we're done with uh, coil number. Coil number two. We tag the coils and we know exact location where these coils are supposed to go in so that uh, we don't make the mistakes of placing them in the wrong position. So we have taken the measurements uh, at the time of removing the old coil and hence we know where exactly each of these coils is supposed to go so that we get back to the same position on the same winding that the original windings are. So you can see the slot insulations are uh, going on. So this is center vapor. And we used uh, this candle, this is all center paper, and then this is a 15 mil top paper. So that's what they also use. Measurements are accurate, so papers are getting bent. And the next part is the coil preparation. So the coils are being dragged through the tension plate, and then on the tension plate, it goes all the way to our standard. Calling machine. So, so this is how the car looks like right now. So the first 
first coil is supposed to be two turns, then you have a single turn, then you have a two turn, then you have a single turn, then you have a two turn. That's how it is. So it's coming well through the tension plate not on the coil machines. So coils are made sure that they are in the right shape. So as you could see this is the diamond shape that we are using right now. This is how it looks like. Okay. Yeah, we seem to have reached almost the final stage. This was one of the crazy drives. The customer wanted to have this rewinding done in a matter of four days to five days. Uh, so I did not find much time to do all the recordings. But yeah, we reached the final stage of one machine gelling. And you could see um, the taping is done pretty well. Uh, an inch between each one. We took the taping for every slot rather than doing it for two. Uh, we want to make sure that the o ranks are stiff. So this is the condition of the only right now on this side. Yeah. It's done pretty well. Uh, as, as usual, the, the most important point is the stiffness that come, comes out from the slots. As you can see, there is enough of gap between each coil here. That's what maintains insulation between the face to face, you can see here. So the core is, is here and then it comes out straight all the way, almost like 20 mm. Then takes the deviation of about uh, 60 degrees. Uh, so that's the beauty of the diamond shaped coils. So you could see every inch the taping is done. And then the sleeving, the standard sleeves goes all the way to the terminals. You have the terminals. Sorry, it's reflecting. So it comes all the way to the terminal. And this is how it is. Right now we are working on the testing. We'll go cut out all, all kinds of standard testings that we are supposed to do. And then start the assembly. So you can see that uh, we're doing a surge voltage test. So this is the four terminals that are connected to the stator. Seems to be coming pretty well so far. I'm trying to apply one small pick the peak voltage is what we are looking at. 1589, 600, 1800 this is the number. And the curvature of the impulse is pretty standard and that's what we expect. So the windings pass right now is the search impulse testing. Yeah, so apart from that, we also did an insulatory microns testing. It's giving 6.43 microns, and it's balanced across all the three phases. Uh, we'll do that next. Uh, and, uh, my camera is not so good. Yeah. So right now it's in 19 millivolts range. Uh, you can see it's 6.34. This is between uh, neutral and W phase. Next phase, please. Red and shift mode. Red red. So you can see it's 6.33, close to what we had previous. The next phase, please. Next one is 6.44 to very close, very close to what we had earlier. 6.33, 6.4. 4.2 and 6.34 and this is my son <laughs> and this is granddaddy <laughs> this is my <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so the winding testing is over we will move to the next phase now thanks yeah so you are seeing right now the DG being installed on the client side uh, the engine is on load and uh, Sorry, engine is on load, you call it fine. So now we have the windings being tested. Um, vibration seems to be okay so far. 
it was early morning friday we did the, the load testing so it was the same alternator that we deliver i just muted the sound so that um, you don't have uh, you don't feel uncomfortable fine so that's the load cable that you saw there and that's how the dg is being set up it right now so what we are trying to do is we are trying to measure the temperature um temperature of the windings uh, one of the key points that all of us have to remember is uh, you should not see any variance in temperature uh, if the if the windings are not done properly right then you should really observe or see uh, a huge variations in in the temperature across uh, different sections of the windings uh, so which is what uh, we need to observe so here we can see the system is loaded uh, the system is loaded for 405 amps and you have 487 and then uh, 403 those are the three uh, amperages across three different phases um it's right now close to around 1050 1040 according to my clock and the client wants us to do some kind of um, uh, load test further more load test for a longer duration um So I'm busy temperature and measuring the temperature of the overhang side, um, just to make sure that um, there's nothing wrong. Um, the set mode temperature sensor that would give, give me the, the, the overhang readings, uh, temperature of the overhangs. I'm trying to measure across different points so that I can get uh, the readings of all the three different phases or different sets of uh, different points uh, of the twelve set of coils. So let's go to the panel board and see what's going on there. People seem to be busy checking the relays, <coughs> change of switches, and this is another DC that's running in parallel to the 500 kV that we put in. So they also have another DC which is 380 kV, and that seems to be showing. Uh, 210 amps, um, 200 amps, uh, 0.98 power factor. That's the reading you're getting there. Right? And this one is specifically for the 500 kV that uh, we did rewinding. So you could see uh, a current of close to around 530 amps. Is what I would say, 450 volts. The power factor is 0.87. 0.8587. Fine. So generally, in other places, I've seen it easily process 0.9, but but here it's still at 0.8485, uh, which is okay as per the nameplate because the nameplate says so. <coughs> so we're going to continue monitoring for some more time, um, as that's what the client really wants. Yeah, so I've been measuring the temperature, fine, of the body. Uh, one of my biggest concern is um, there is an unequal loading of between the three phases, fine. So the middle phase, the R phase, uh, seems to be at around 400 amperes. The middle phase is at 515 amperes, and the last phase, uh, B phase, is again close to around 405 amperes. Um, there is an 100 amperes variation across uh, the phases. 
and the root cause that I understood from the operators is that they have a seam welding machine which is loaded for R and Y phase and it's a 90 kV machine um, welding machine that is causing this imbalance of load uh, uh, the other thing that's hitting my head right now is that uh, we already know saying that uh, uh, the inductive load causes uh, a power factor